Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Dream Big with Jana, inspiring you to reignite, refire, and refuel your life. And right now, I closed all my applications. Now I can see Sandra on the screen. So right now, I just want to say that we have a fabulous guest today for the second episode and a very special one with a special guest. Her name is Sandra Winter. And if you were watching and listening in the previous episode with Sandra, you can find it on um, Hummingbird Academy today here on Facebook. Also, it's going to be in a few hours on YouTube channel if you go to Jean Spitz, find Sandra Win Winter and Dream Big with Jana, then you will easily find that episode where Sandra was sharing her inspiring story and how she re literally came to the point of her life when she is so open to receiving and giving and serving really uh, with the and, and co-creating with the divine realm. So today, let me, for those of you who, um, who are new to Sandra's world, let me just say just a few words from her official bio. So she is, Sandra Winter, is an interfaith minister, singer-songwriter, sound healing practitioner, and intuitive angelic miracle healer, and she enjoys giving transformational talks and assisting others um, have the life to have the life they desire and deserve. And I love the message that she has for humanity and women specifically. She helps them to take a quantum leap and land on their feet, no matter what. <laughs> I love it, Sandra. So welcome to episode number two with you Today, it's your show because we are doing angel reading session, open session, and I volunteered to be the guinea pig. So <laughs> completely raw, completely unscripted, and take the stage. Well, um, first of all, thank you so much um, to, to be on here again and to be able to do this work with you and... Um, also, you know, I truly believe that when I work with people, it's a co-creation. You know, it's not me doing anything to you or for you or any of the people that I work with. It's truly a co-creation. And um, what I normally like to do when I'm working with someone is to start with, with prayer, just to make sure that we're both present and ready to receive. So if that's all right with you, let's let's just start there. All right. Yes, Senator. Just one little thing. I want to, to let everybody know who is uh, everyone who is watching, whether the replay or right now in real time, or listening, guys. It's going to uh, shift your world too. While Sandra is seemingly working on one person, which is me then um, it radiates, you are in the same field, energetic field. So just watch out for the miracles in, in your own world and your own body, and it radiates and transcends into your life. Am I correct? Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much for, for adding that piece because that's absolutely correct. You know, um, when we're in the when we're in a field of transformation, it doesn't matter whether the focus is on one individual or not. Um, the transformation applies to everyone who is paying attention. Basically, yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank awesome. You. So, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So, dear divine spirit, thank you so much for this time we have together. I ask specifically that you help Sandra, the personality to get out of the way so that the divine angels may come and do the perfect work for this one who is in front of me, namely Jana. And we also say and affirm that, that she is a proxy for all the people who are watching and listening today and in the future. 
we thank you that she has stepped forward to be that proxy, to be that example. And we thank you too, that only what is best and highest is what occurs for her and for everyone who is listening and watching now and in the future. I just ask that you be with us today and that you guide us on this transformational journey we are taking starting now. Thank you. And so it is. And so it is. <laughs> <It's David's face. laughs> yes, we're ready. <laughs> and it cannot be otherwise. <laughs> so, um, John, I just want to ask you, I mean, what is it that you would like to have happen as a result of us doing this work together today? So I, I have a few questions. I, j I jotted down the few questions which are relevant to me personally. And I believe um, through the work that I'm doing in the world, as you know, being the speaker, the coach, and also the singer songwriter. So all the, I don't like the word clients. I, I work, I just, people I work with because they become a part of me. I know that these will resonate with uh, a lot of people, a lot of women and men um, out there. But personally, um, let me just, should I, should I tell you all of them or just one by one? How would you like me to do? No, go ahead and, and, and mention all of them. It's basically three. Um, one is around a huge thing about self-sabotaging. And when I say when I say self sabotage, it's really I feel that it's such a skillful dance mm -hmm. inside our mind. And I'll be talking about myself specifically because I'm a creative. I could design like any possible <laughs> scenario in my <laughs> life, right? I, in my head and live through that. And so what can, what can happen in me specifically? I know to get, let's say from point A to point B is a straight line for me, like in some of the projects or some of the ideas that I have. But instead of making this straight line, because I think in my head, it's kind of boring and easy and fast, how about we'll overcomplicate it and make it curvy or maybe maybe make it in a loop shape so what is it and how and then at the end when you get to point b you could you say the same thing that you knew from the beginning like it could be a straight line and you could be doing something else right now and something else and something and something else so what is it and it sounds funny but we get caught up um, we, I can just wake up in the morning and say, hey, how about I'll play role of, of this little prickster today? And I will be poking myself for, for nothing, you know? And, and <laughs> so who is that? How do we um, smooth that out or have the control? At the end of the day, um, we think, this is what I think, we think we have control over it because it's kind of, it's my creation, right? I create that character in my mind. Mm. How can I not, let's say, make it the main character in the movie for today? It could be like in the back somewhere, right? Or appear like once or twice for excitement. How do I quiet? Because I write the script. So that's mm. question number one. And that's the, the self-sabotage. The second, if you want me to, uh, to continue with that, it's two more. Uh, the second is, what is your uh, take? Like, what would you say, because you're so connected with the angels and you've been working um, in, in communicating with them um, for such a long time, what would be your advice on how to get the messages uh, from them maybe on a daily basis when it's a, it's not really such a yes and no question, but I have doubts. When it's a yes and no question, it's kind of easy for us. It's like black and white. But when it's like, should I do it or should I not? What's like, mm. and that's the gray area. How to get this advice um, from this, other realm because I know we are 
never alone. We are always surrounded. It's just a, a matter of how do you tune in and really hear what, what the message is. And number three, the only permanent, <laughs> the only permanent thing in life is the change. And we all do not like it. Like we don't like the change. So what, how can we embrace the change, the constant change that is happening to us? So that's three. Awesome. Um, there, okay, so there are a couple of different ways we, we can do this. And, and I think um, I'm just going to start out by answering a few of the questions and then we'll see where else the angels wanna go. Um, we'll start with your last question, which is how do we deal with change? And actually this answer will probably go a long way toward answering the other questions too. Because what I have been learning um, in my work and my walk with the angels is that of course, just like, just like life, you know, it's, we're living moment to moment, right? So I could give you an answer, they can give you an answer, but it's never going to be exactly the same every day across the board. Because we're doing a dance, this life is a dance that we're doing. And, and if you want to be able to hear your messages from the angels, it starts first by building the relationship with them. And that means um, finding a way to connect and, and realizing that you can connect um, in lots of different ways, but it's a relationship. I mean, um, be, the angels are with you all the time. And as such, you, you are not a stranger to them, but you may feel that they are a stranger to you. Does that make sense? Because if, you, if you're not used to connecting with them, it may feel like, well, how, how do I connect? And they're, they're saying, we're right here. <laughs> they're saying, we're right here. We've always been here. But, but they also understand that because, because we don't always necessarily see them, it may feel a little strange to like talk to somebody who, who you can't see, for instance. So one way of connecting is through journaling. Um, how I first happened to connect to my angels was through something called alternate handwriting, where I would write a question with my right hand, and then I would wait until I would hear an answer, and I would write it with my left hand. Now, the way that this works is that when you write with your non-dominant hand, I mean, maybe in your case, if you're left-handed, you would write the answer with your right hand. It's just, you write the question with your dominant hand and you write the answer with your non-dominant hand. Let's uh -huh. put it that way. Uh -huh. So anyway, um, I, I was doing this one day, writing in my journal, and I don't even remember what the question was, but the answer came, we are your angels and we want to talk to you. It was that clear and that strong. And of course I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's going on? So, but, but that's how it happened with me. Now that doesn't mean it's going to operate the same way with everyone, but that's one thing I always suggest. Write, write your question. It's a good idea to write your questions down anyway because that way you have a record of the answers as they come. Mm -hmm. um, so journaling is one way. Um, meditation is another way. Um, meditation and prayer, because you can, you can connect with your angels via meditation. And, and one of the ways in which I often work with people is by doing like a guided meditation where we go into a meditative state, state and then we connect with the angels. And we, and we may do a little bit of that today as we have time. But um, meditation is a great way because you can set the intention before you meditate and just say, angels, I really want to connect with you on this issue. 
and I'd really like for you to make your presence known in a way that I can understand. And that, that part is very important because, um, you know, if, if, we, if we're not used to communicating with the angels, they, they are communicating with us in subtle ways all the time. Like I know, like you have told me about the numbers, you know, 444 and 1111, you know, that's one form of, of spiritual communication. But not everyone knows this, right? Mm -hmm. so, so it's important to ask that they communicate with you in ways that you can understand. Um, and, and they always do. You know, um, so, so you can go into a meditative state. You can also pray. Um, <laughs> my life has been saved so many times by angels, uh, times when I've not been aware that it was they who were helping me and times when I've been very aware. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so, so angels will always directly intervene if, for instance, your life is in danger and um, it's not your time to go. But when we purposely communicate with them via prayer, um, we can just request, I would really like your help on this. Can you please reveal to me the direction I need to go? Whatever your question is, you know, so, so you can directly ask. Now, there's something very important to get about this. And that is, and that's why this thing of saying, communicate with me in a way that I understand is important mm -hmm. because you're not, you're not usually going to get an answer written across the sky. It's not going to come in big flashing lights. I mean, that's never happened to me. But, but what it is, is it's almost like tending a garden. Your relationship with spirit, your relationship with the angels is like tending a garden. You have to be present in order to receive the answer. It's kind of like one of those contests. You must be present to win. <laughs> so, so, so in other words, in order for you to hear the answer, you have to be expectant. You have to expect that you're going to get an answer. Yeah. And sometimes that may mean being patient. So, so, but the interesting thing is that the answer always comes. It's just a question of, of, letting them know that you're ready to receive it and expecting that it's going to come in the right way and and and, and in the right time mm -hmm. does that make sense so far it it does i have a uh, i have just two quick questions uh clarifying around that so uh, first of all you mentioned prayer what if a person um, i'm not religious i'm spiritual but i'm open to meditation i do meditation mm -hmm. uh, pe people do you have to be my question really is do you have to be religious to uh communicate with the angels or well, it, yeah so that's i'm so glad you asked that and the answer is a big no um for when I say prayer, um, for me, prayer is like a conversation. So mm -hmm. in this case, you want to communicate with your angels. You're not asking a saint or any kind of other divine figure to intercede for you. You're communicating directly with them. So you can do that. You don't need, you don't need me even, you know, you don't need anyone to to intercede for you, you can just have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. So it might go something like this. Dear angels, I, I believe in you. I know you're out there and I want to have, I want to feel a direct connection with you. So please help me to experience you in a way that makes sense to me and that lets me know that you are with me. It can be like that. It's just it's just a simple conversation like you and I are having. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be religious. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to mention God. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, I, I will say, you know, that the angels are part of the universal framework. Yeah. You know, that that was created by a force that 
we are a part of. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. So, so if you're, even if you're an atheist, you know, if you want to communicate with the angels, it helps to understand that there is a framework in place. Yes. You know, um, it doesn't matter what you call that framework. It Absolutely. really doesn't because, because it's like, you can say you don't believe in gravity, but the fact is there's <laughs> gravity. <laughs> well, that's a good analogy. That's a good, <laughs> the, whether you want it or not, believe it or not, it does. The apple will fall on your head, right? <laughs> well, if we are not in the outer space, when if we are on the planet, I got it. And the second question, thank you, Sandra. And the second question is how long it might take, because you mentioned the patience, and we do get impatient. So um, I understand that we have to ask first. So we initiate the contact, uh, the, the contact. And, um, and then you say that we got to be patient. How patient and how soon can we get the answer? Or how long? Like, what's the longest that happened for you? Um, well, I mean, first of all, I'll say that I've learned not to put time frames around things. Um, because when I do what ha it's, I mean, I don't think that this means that the angels can't or won't answer things within a certain amount of time. But what happens with me when I put a deadline I get nervous. And then when we get nervous or anxious, we're not able to receive the answer. Or, or I'll just say me, I'm not able to receive the answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I personally don't usually do that. Mm -hmm. However, you know, here's, here is one thing that, that I would suggest. they're they're laughing <laughs> there be, because first of all you know with with the angels there's no such thing as time right so so it's a human construct um but let's say let's say um you need an answer on something and you've got you've got personally a deadline for something that has to happen by tomorrow and you're not sure what to do mm -hmm. you know the the first thing is to is to say that to the angels, you know, to communicate to them, you know what, guys, um, I'm in a real pickle here. And, and I need your guidance as to what to do. And I'm asking for your intercession. Please show me a clear sign on the direction I need to go. Got it. When I have asked in that way, the answers have never failed to come. Mm -hmm. I've always, and often I won't be given the whole solution. I'll be given like maybe one small piece. Mm -hmm. And as I proceed step by step, the rest of the picture becomes clear. It's like, um, it's like, there's this, there's this story about a blind man who comes upon an elephant and he may know what an elephant is, but when he first bumps into the elephant, he has no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. So he has to kind of feel his way piece by piece until his mind is able to say, oh, this must be. And then, you know, the elephant will make a sound or he'll feel the trunk or he'll feel a tusk and then he gets the picture. So sometimes it's like that for us. We have to be willing to go step by step. Does that make sense? Very much so. Yeah. Good. Because the answers always come, but sometimes we have to take one baby steps in order to be able to see the whole picture. Got it. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, the first question, which is about self-sabotage. You know, um, this, the self-sabotage comes because on some level, um, and I'm going to say we, because this happens to me too, um, I get afraid, you know, we get afraid. And so self-sabotage is our way of sort of like holding back because we're afraid if we really go forward in the way that we want to, we'll be disappointed or, or something bad will happen, right? So 
so here is what the angels are saying. It goes back to the elephant. It goes back to proceeding step by step and being willing to turn over each individual step to, to your angelic guidance. So what might this look like? Let's say, I mean, you, you were using the example of, of the, the trickster, right? You yes. start out thinking you're going to be doing one thing and then, you know, the little gremlin comes and the next thing you know, you're supposed to be going to California. Well, you're already in California, but you're <laughs> supposed to be going to New York and you wind up in, in Hawaii. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so here's what they're saying. They are saying that that when you start out the day, you're starting with a with a good place, with all the good intentions, right? So when you feel yourself, and usually when we're paying attention, we can feel when we're starting to veer from New York to Hawaii, right? Mm -hmm. We can feel. Maybe it'll start with you know, let's say you know that. You need, you're on deadline, you need to turn in a report to the boss by noon. Mm -hmm. But then you, you find yourself surfing the internet, you, you, you're, you start calling your friends. You can tell when you're starting to veer off course, right? Yes. So the moment you become aware you're going off course, stop. Stop and say, okay, I'm doing that thing that I know I really don't want to do. So angels, can you help me to get back on course here? See, because we're always a choice. We are always, always a choice. And the reason that we start out going to go to New York and wind up in Hawaii is because we don't make we don't make a choice. Well, we are making a choice. It's just that it's not really a conscious choice, or we we trick ourselves into believing it's not a conscious choice. Mm -hmm. So what the angels are saying is, the moment we feel ourselves starting to go off track, that's the time to stop and to reconnect to our purpose. Because it's not enough to just say, "Oh, I'm supposed to be. I've 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 done it again." Ugh. I'm supposed to be going to New York and I'm in Albuquerque. So, um, so how about lightening up and just saying, you know what? Oh, I'm doing that thing again. Maybe I need to make a right turn here. So angels, can you help me to make a right turn here? It's really that simple. And they will always help in terms of like, how can I do that without beating myself up? Mm -hmm. That's, that's a another good question that I personally have learned to ask, like, how can I get back on track without feeling like a terrible person? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because um, they, they really want this to be fun. Yes. You know, the, the angels are very fun loving. Fun loving. I, yes. I yes. love that. I love that. I love that. <laughs> So let me let me just uh, repeat and kind of the takeaways that I just got from you and the angels. It's number one. What is a great reminder is to always stop and ask. It's just like how do we actually do the ask? And a lot of us are not in the habit of asking. We just, mm -hmm. we are so like on automatic doing things and keeping busy, which is not exactly what uh, being productive means. That's another question. So mm -hmm. stop and ask. And, and uh, what I also understand is that they have our back all the time. And whether we want it or not, <laughs> they have they are always uh it's like the friends that we can trust who have our best interest in heart mm -hmm. and like you said i love the example when it's the life or death situation they always show up without waiting for us to ask for their help but if it's something that is not so crucial then they wait for us to wake up 
and right and and just bring it into our consciousness hey we're here so ask for guidance and ask and you shall receive right so that's that's my biggest take away from 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 today it's uh it's beautiful and also having fun along the way and um what else did you say you said that um this little there's no time there's no concept of time and we sometimes forget that in this other realm the divine realm there's no concept of time and so when we ask and this anxiety around like when when am i going to get the answer it's really coming from us and we get anxious and what it creates it's it becomes the attachment and attachment instead of opening up and receiving like you said that we are not ready to receive in that moment is because the attachment is so huge that the door is closed. Correct. I see. So it's it's been a great reminder. Thank you so much. I hope everybody who's listening and watching, you guys are getting the light bulbs like boom, 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 ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and you're going in your head. Sandra, thank you so much. This is what Sandra does, by the way. She gets hired to do the angel readings for people and the sound healing uh, sessions. And she's she's an amazing singer-songwriter also. So if you, Sandra, is it okay if people have questions or they would like to have a reading of their own um, to contact you? Oh, absolutely. Um, and by the way, um, I do have a free gift for for your listeners today. Um, and would it be easier rather than just telling people, can we like put it? Uh, absolutely. Through? It's the link. The link. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. It's the link through your website. It, is that the 15 minute angel reading? It is the angel reading. Hey guys, you lucky. It's the <laughs> angel reading my uh, mini session, 15 minutes. But as you can see, I mean, you can accomplish so much in this 15 minute time frame. So it's on Sandra's website. We're going to post the direct link to that. But you can also comment and ask additional questions through sandrawintermusic.com. That's her mm -hmm. official, official website. You can also find her on Facebook. If you like what you see, please, please, please let us know. Comment below this video here on YouTube, anywhere. Share it with the friends who will benefit and who are also other powerful uh, co-creators who work with the divine realm or who would like to start uh, embracing that idea of openness and really oneness and uh, co-creating beyond the possibilities of our own conscious mind. So mm -hmm. that would be another, another way for us all to do. But for now, Sandra, do you have anything in closing before we, before we finish uh, and say goodbye to all these <laughs> lovely people out there? Any words of wisdom from you or the angels? Yes. Um, what, the, what the angels would like to say is that we truly are around you all the time. And we are nothing but love energy. And, and that all we require from you is your desire to connect with us. There are as many ways to connect with us as you can possibly imagine and they're usually very simple but just be willing to ask and we are ever, ever ready to serve our message to humanity is one of love and of empowerment it makes us sad to see human beings suffer when the solutions are all about connecting with the power that is already within and around you. So we ask that you take this as a direct invitation to remember us for we are here as we have always been for you and ever shall be. Wow, what a beautiful message. Thank you. Thank you so much to you and the angels. And guys, you are 
watching and listening dream big to dream big with jana inspiring you to reignite refire and refuel your life and today on the program we had the pleasure to be experiencing this angel session open angel session of angel reading session with sandra sandra winter thank you so much sandra and we will see you very very soon thank you thank you Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.